everyone and welcome back to another episode another season of bird's eye view i'm your host erica mccall aka bird because my last name is mccall and we're back with season two i know it's been a long journey since we've we've we talked and you've heard from me but we're back and we're better than ever last time you guys heard from me i was in Beshitash, turkey playing overseas ball now i'm in bakersfield california not washington dc but we'll get back to that soon but let's talk about what the season is going to encompass in these months that we're going to be talking and vibing so this season y'all i know last year we talked a lot about overseas basketball but this year we're going to be talking about all professional basketball so it's going to be all encompassing it's going to be overseas it's going to be WNBA. it's going to be magical i think that's a beautiful word to describe it but we'll get into all that later right now let's introduce my guest so my guest here today oh man my guest here today is 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 world renowned she is a freaking rock star she i mean it's hard to to describe all her accolades she she is the ceo <laughs> She is the president. She is the <laughs> the mind behind highlighter. She's um, used to model. She used to. Um, I'm gonna help cheer. you out. Look, <laughs> but you're not gonna talk about me like I'm a has been. That's not what you're gonna do. But continue. Still do, but like still my like. Come y'all, on. this is Ari Chambers, y'all. There we go. Uh, my dear friend, and she's here to help me out with my first episode of season two. She's super dope. If y'all don't know who Ari Chambers is, she's just a well-established journalist in mm-hmm. in this game, uh, specifically focusing on the women's game, amplifying the women's game. Um, and I think that's you know what your job is. That's that's what you come to do. You come to amplify a game, hype us up, hype us up as as female athletes, as females in general. And I'm just super hyped to have her on this podcast. Super blessed. She's big time, y'all. It's I'm big a, time. A we literally met me interviewing her. So, I mean, I think you're the big time one. Out of the we two got of a us. celebrity in the building. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> Aka you. my house. Shout out, shout out to my mom who's, <laughs> who had a quiet in her voice to, <laughs> to talk to my grandma. A real like, one. Because I'm like recording, we're recording mom in the living room. So I'm going to need quiet on set so mm-hmm. shout out to moms but all right thank you for being here today is it's a huge blessing like i said and to have a person like you starting off season two of bird's eye view it's anytime just super dope. anytime erica it's just super dope in bakersfield <laughs> well this episode of bird's eye view is going to focus on my journey it's going to focus on me again i'm going to be interviewed by the one and only Ari chamber you're going to be talked to I'm not gonna say it's an interview because okay. Why is we're that? gonna because we're gonna have to dive deep into some things that you know I'm a I'm a it's so, it's very a, blunt person it's just so a conversation conversation we're gonna dive deep into why you're in Bakersfield how you're feeling all that all that so today's title is trusting the process <laughs> trusting the process <laughs> because that's truly what I've I've had to do um, in these last probably in this last year and a half really it's been beyond that you you've guys. been having trust processes for a while but we are proud that you are able to reflect on the past year and a half and grow from it but yes i have i have and so we're just going to be diving into my life what it's been like for me really my whole basketball career but um we'll actually you know tap into why i'm here in baseball california why i'm not on a wma team right now but before we do that before we do all of that not you reeling it back in really back in per 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 you know, guys, we like to do games. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just going to do a little fast, fat, fast, Ari, mm. Ari facts. Artifacts, Ari oh, facts. She did it. Oh, she did it. And she was so proud, y'all. I wish you could have seen her face. I'm so hyped. So this is titled Ari facts. Ba-doom-tsh. Ba-doom-tsh. <laughs> and we're just going to get to know okay. a little bit more about our guest here today. So it's just some, some fun, some mm-hmm. quick little questions, you know, help us both get warmed up. Am I this. answering quick or are you just asking quick? We'll see. Your choice. We'll see. You can answer this as fast or This is your podcast, so it's your choice. You can answer as fast as, I'm letting you know right now, you can answer as fast or slow as you would like. Okay. Okay. Artifa- artifacts. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. First question. If you were owner of a WBA team, 
where would it be and what is the team's name? Oh, it's the Charlotte Sting. I like to keep things classic. <laughs> Nostalgia all day. I already talked to Don Staley about it. She thinks I'm joking. I'm like, nah, we got to bring back the Charlotte Sting. You know, I'm North Carolina to the end, to the very end. And, you know, I would like, you know, to bring back a team to, or bring a team to Raleigh, but I respect the legacy of, you know, the pioneering team. So, Charlotte Sting. If you you can bring a Raleigh team back. I know. I can bring both. You can bring both back. Okay, so you can bring the Charlotte team back. But if you had uh, a Raleigh team, what would it be? It'd be like the Raleigh. Um, I would do the Raleigh Rage just because that was the name Rage. of one of my, yeah, one of my cheer gyms growing up. And so cheer. I would bring back that name uh, in honor of my cheer days. And so name it Raleigh Rage. That's cute. I like that. If I had a team, it'd be the Bakersfield. Um, oh, we're putting it in Bakersfield. Absolutely. No shade. No shade. No shade in Bakersfield. Yeah, I don't want Bakersfield to is my hometown it home. it's 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 what i love it's mm -hmm. who i am so mm -hmm. it'd be a bakersfield team obviously and we'd be um the bakersfield it's gotta be another the bulldogs oh absolutely not you don't want to be basic mm -mm. Oh. no i was gonna say like the buccaneers be bakersfield bucks we can do the bakersfield bucks that's cute because um we had this if if, if anyone is is big is a big country music fan. Um, we have a, a legendary singer from Bakersfield named Buck Owens. Ah. And yeah, Bakersfield's actually really big for country music. Tell him to put five on it when you bring it here. He's no longer. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. That took a left. Okay. Next question. Shout Next Buck. question. <laughs> Good old Buck. Come on, Bakersfield Buck. <laughs> In honor. May your soul rest in peace. Okay, next okay. question. I'm sorry. <laughs> next question. I, I probably should have warned you. You should have, but here we are. But thank you, Buck. We appreciate you. And if I ever had a team, it'd be named after you. Okay. If you could in interview anyone, dead or alive, who would it be? Oh, wow. I know you get this one a lot. No, that one's actually really difficult. Really? Because a lot, like it used to be Dominique Dawes. I, I was able to do that. And Venus and Serena, they were oh. great. Um, dead or alive. I would want to, I think that honestly, Michelle Obama, just because the strength that she has shown and every, you know, she, she really is the rock and I, I've read her book and I, I just want to know how she navigated such a high pressure situation, having to be the support system of somebody so visible. Um, I'm all, but like still holding her own, making a name for herself. So I would say Michelle Obama right now, as far as athletes, um, it's 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 difficult for me because I, uh, you know, my first one was Lisa Leslie, and when I got that interview, I was like, yeah, Lisa, she's great, and you know, Don. I would love to interview Lisa as well. So Lisa, Lisa, come on Lisa, on this pod now. Um, I would want to actually do a sit down. I'm I'm pretty close with Cheryl Swoop, so I want to do a sit down with her and really get into the the nitty gritty of her experience with the league and her experience playing. Um, and just really the raw candy conversation. So Cheryl, this year, I'm sure I'm gonna press you for that. So just be prepared for me to get on your nerves like I always do. <laughs> Cheryl's dope. She's a pioneer of our league, a legend. That would be an amazing interview. Yep. Yeah, and you guys are you guys are good friends. So. We are. But yeah. I just want, I really want to sit her down and be like, take me seriously, let's do this talk. <laughs> it would be, be a dope conversation. I would I would listen to it. I'd be too. Thank you, Erica. Thank, Love that for you're us. You're welcome. Love it. You're welcome. Okay, next question. Okay. If you played basketball, oh, geez. what position would you play? I'd be a big guard. What you mean? If you guys know what <laughs> I came up with, she is um, six one, like six one, yeah. or like three. I'm six two, and I'm a solid we're, like, six one. Looking like La China, I, like you know how La China got on Twitter and said that I wasn't even six feet tall. I was like, girl, you ain't seen me in a while. Um, your girl grew over quarantine, but yes, I'm six one. I could be a big guard. It's cute for me. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, you you also used to cheer as well. Yeah, and <laughs> it's just it's and play volleyball. So I yeah. really did okay. Okay, it's giving forward. forward. Yeah. Okay. So I would either way, my game would be just based on defense. I'm like a defensive mm -hmm. minded person. Come on, defense even like even like with volleyball, mm -hmm. like uh, yeah, I was a block. I was middle blocker, right. not middle hitter. Like right. there was like there's a difference. Right. There's a difference, y'all. Um, shout out to, you know, all my teams growing up. But um, I'm just very defensive minded. So like like Breon January's type of style. Okay. Yeah. Bree is, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like tie to her like I don't know why I wanted to name her. If I were a guard, you know. 
<laughs> but you, you insist on me being a forward. So I, give me Brianna Turner. Mm -hmm. there, there we go. go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so Brianna, it was hard for me to preach. The, I can be feisty and like, but I'm not as quick. So yeah, Brianna Turner is, that's, 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 a, good, that's a great that's one. That's a good comparison. Or Elizabeth, like I know I'm Elizabeth. never going to be at a center, Boom. but she's Block a shot blocker. Shots. And yeah, I think she, that- She blocks shots like a volleyball player. Yeah, and that's, she would swap and things. Yeah. I just still remember her, like the Duke um, spot that they did on her defense. So yeah, that's, that's yeah. I'd be like the Brianna Turner slash Elizabeth Williams defense, mm. I think. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I can't hold my weight. Down in the, in the post like that, but you yeah, know, push down a little bit. I, a little. You're pretty strong though. I am strong. some muscles. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, Angela Bassett. Okay, you see, you see, poking, poking on this, <laughs> poking on this on, interview. Poking. Come on, Angela Bassett. Next question. Mm -hmm. Not you, not you looking at my questions. I didn't. I promise. <laughs> you know my vision's bad. <laughs> if you had your own podcast. Mm -hmm. What's the theme? What's the topic? And what are you titling it? I would get moderately tipsy with players, and so I can get like, the, like, like it would be like, mm -hmm. yeah, let's drink a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. obviously not drunk. Right. Uh, we're all twenty, well, over twenty one. Just one red solo cup. Just one mm -hmm. red solo cup. Right. It wouldn't be as funny because I'm not as funny as Sue and Diana, so that's not going to be a thing. But like, very much, let's kick it, yeah. chill, and talk about life. And I would have absolutely no direction of like my line of questioning. I'd be like, so what you want to talk let's about? Just, let's just go into it. Period. Mm -hmm. And that's 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 very much my vibe. It is. And I would love to do it. So whoever is listening, I would love to do it. I just smiled at the camera that we have here. and Y'all couldn't see it, so Come there's awkward silence um, with the podcast. But yes. Come on, higher ups. Do you have yeah. a title for it? Or do you want to keep that? You let's let's right. let's not push this too much before you know it's coming <laughs> it's coming y'all don't be surprised if if this podcast is coming a very it's coming very soon and we got <laughs> we got the exclusive here on birds you did you did what probably did too much did. information but you did it's fine as as long as i'm a a guest on there you want to be a guest on my show yeah, and That's my cute. and my choice of drink is I like margaritas. I know you're a tequila girl. Mm -hmm. I am a vodka girl, y'all. Don't judge me. So okay, you go drink your, your vodka, and I'm gonna drink my. But but what do you drink? Like you drink. Like I could do it on the rocks, probably. Vodka. <laughs> anyway, next question. <laughs> is she Russian? Next question. <laughs> Russian vodka is different. Though. Anyway, okay, last question. WBA predictions. Let's do champion and MVP of the season. So I, okay, for champion, I want to believe that Connecticut can finish it out. They have all the pieces that they had in that 2019 team. The only difference now is they've gelled together and they've added Dewana Bonner. So shout out I, to my sister. Shout out to your sister. Mm -hmm. Um, so I really want to see Connecticut get what they've been aiming to. Like Hurt has been very, very clear about. Um, keeping this group together and yes. being very strategic about um, the the puzzle pieces fitting together so he can keep his core group together and the return of Courtney Williams it's really really special because she is a part of that team's identity so I, I'm I'm I want to say Connecticut my other thing is can Chicago do a back-to-back -back? especially because Emma Meesman mm -hmm. is added really and strong. they didn't really they're not missing anything like yeah. missing any core pieces from that I mean they're obviously there's been movement Stephanie Jolson's now in um New York and Diamond's now in mm -hmm. Phoenix but and Lexi's now in LA but they're 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 things but I want to see if they can go back to back and then Sue Bird's last year you can't count out Seattle you can't count I don't out. believe Sue this ain't her last year you know, it's a lot of theatrics if it's not her last year. Super, oh, super is tired. She's like, I'm about to have a broadcasting career. I'm good on this camera. So, so I was like, yes, ma'am, for years. She can't. Well, like I'm, Diana said, she, I don't know when I'm going to be done. Look, I'm just saying, Sue Bird has a great broadcasting career ahead of her. She, she is so good on screen, and mm -hmm. we love watching her do that. And she has um, good representation to make that happen for her and get a right. big check from it. Also, shout out to Seal. It's her last Still year coming is around. my heart and uh Give her all the flowers. Give yeah, the you flowers. saw we painted a mural for her in her hometown in mm -hmm. Little Haiti, Miami. And I just feel like as we're saluting the vets, especially the ones retiring, um, that have given so much into the game, we need to really acknowledge the fact that she is a rock in this league and has been for such a long time. The longevity is amazing. The fact that she's winning defensive player of the year still is amazing. The fact she's playing full seasons and really being a staple in Minnesota now, like, you know, obviously she was great in Chicago, but like everything that she did and is continuing to do is just so great. And, you know, you've seen her in USAB, um, 
this past what was it final four practicing mm -hmm. just like just being so being great yeah. a wonderful person on and off the court absolutely i played with Syl. well i didn't really have the opportunity to get to play with her because she was injured that yeah, season, she was, yeah. um in minnesota but just the person she was off the court was mm -hmm. absolutely amazing i appreciated her presence her leadership with Minnesota and the little preseason game that I played. Never mind playing that either. Dang, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. But you had her but I to was, yes. keep, hold you down in the bubble, and that was probably exactly. And no, special. it was truly needed because the bubble, man, it, the bubble was something special, and you needed people like that yeah. in order for you to get through times like that in the bubble. So shout out to Sue. Shout out to Sue. Well, that's the end of my questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, Is it time for me to kinda question like, you? It's kind of like. <laughs> You got it. I love you that for me. You, you got the lead. So it's funny because trust the process is something that um, everybody has to come across in their life because life is a process. Nothing is linear. It's just up and down and back and forth. You never know what's coming at you um, at any direction. But I remember there have been several times where you've called me and been like, hey, Ari, this is what I'm going through. Yep. And you always hear from me like hey like feel bad about yourself for like 24 hours and get it together let's create a plan to mm -hmm. to keep going forward so i'm going to take you back to your first way well first of all y'all i don't know if y'all know when professional athletes go to the league from elite programs especially playing final fours like you did your senior year mm -hmm. going straight to the league within what a week yeah so let's let's start there so you you just you played in the final four yep. and went straight to draft mm -hmm. the turnaround for that obviously is insane yes. no time to rest because the, right days. after right after um draft is training camp yes so walk me through the moment y'all were at the final four and you know what south you play in south carolina yes and y'all lost <laughs> <laughs> this is, these are facts um and then you you went home prepared for the draft went to new york city walked me through that whole time okay so Final four. I was actually exhausted. Um, I mean, of course, I would have wished that we would have won, but I also felt uh, like a huge feeling of relief because mm -hmm. we were going through finals right before the final four. Um, I literally finished like finals my, at Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> I literally finished the final paper like the day before, um, the day before we played the final four, and mm -hmm. I was just mentally exhausted. I'm sorry, y'all. That was my mother going out the house. <laughs> I promise you, they probably didn't. Even I try to. Out. I try to warn her of the. She said she'd be quiet, and she's been quiet. She has been. The door was loud. The door was loud. Okay, so okay. your final paper. <laughs> so I have my final paper. I was exhausted. We lost, and I'm like, well, I'm just. I and I couldn't sleep because I was so nervous about the games. Uh -huh. So whatever, we wrapped up. Um, I flew home. <laughs> Because I didn't have an opportunity to move out of my dorm, mm -hmm. my, because we were playing for like the Sweet Sixteen Elite Eight, mm -hmm. my coach Timothy Brown, um, she had to put all my things in trash bags, um, oh. and just put it in the, in our locker room. Okay. Yeah. So all my clothes, everything were in trash bags, and mm -hmm. so I had to go back to campus, figure out how I was gonna move everything out, um, packed everything in my car, mm -hmm. drove home. Um, didn't know if I was gonna be at the draft. Uh, a season was kind of inconsistent for me, but mm -hmm. they called me. I was hyped. They were like, hey, hey you want to come to New York? Heck yeah, I'm going to come to New York. Mm -hmm. Went to New York, got drafted by mm -hmm. Indiana. I was the fourth, so 17th overall mm -hmm. pick, not 14th, 17th yeah. overall pick. Um, but flew, still smiling. We but still that. smiling. Flew back home from New York to California, and I had about maybe five days to prepare mm -hmm. for a training camp. And then I went to training camp. 18. Yeah, so before we even sense. <laughs> <laughs> before we even get to the physical tolls that takes, you know, you were talking about your ups and downs in senior year, and I know that that was a lot of mental situations, mm -hmm. and I you you had to get it together for your team. You were a leader on that team, and y'all were an elite program, and I know that Tara saw some things happen with your game, and, and she told you some advice, so I think that we should share that story and, and go from there. Yeah, man. So um, I had my first boyfriend. <laughs> Adorable. My first boyfriend, my senior year of college. I was a late bloomer. <laughs> my senior year of college. And I just felt led led by my faith um, in God that, you know, it was just it just wasn't a good timing for us to be be together. So I mm -hmm. broke up with him um, like mid-Pac-12 season. 
the day <laughs> it was like the day afterwards like my life went downhill mm -hmm. basketball was absolutely terrible I was having an all-american season like averaging like mm, I was having like 17 17 in, in preseason and in, in, in the all the way in the half of the pac 12 and then I broke up with them and then I averaged like four points mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just terrible mm -hmm. I was crying in my car like my parents were trying to figure out like why am I playing so bad they're like you can't let this affect you and in my mind like like every day I came like prepared came ready and like and I, I wouldn't even say that the the breakup had an impact yeah. on me mentally but I think just sometimes God puts you through things for mm -hmm. a reason and I was struggling <laughs> so for like 10 games I was averaging four four points and one day Tara pulled me to the side um we we're about to play Oregon and she was like Barry do you know the story of Job I was like yeah I know the story of Job like how do you know the story of Job <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy because we just didn't think Tara was a very religious person at all. So it was just a complete surprise that she asked me about the story of Job. I'm like, yeah. She was like, okay, so what's the story of Job? I'm like, well, you know, this man through went through all these trials and tribulations. No, lost his wife, his family, all that, his home. Um, then he was like, well, did you lose faith? I'm like, no. And she's like, exactly. You can't lose faith. You just got to keep pushing through. And eventually in the end, you know, everything comes together for Job and he lives like a beautiful life. And then mm -hmm. I'm like, she's like, so just keep faith. I'm like, Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Coach. I'm just shook that she even knew the story of Job. <laughs> so it was crazy because I actually studied the story of Job in one of my Bible classes mm -hmm. at Stanford. So like I really knew the mm -hmm. story of it. I was like, yo, like how do you know that? Um, and then like literally like after that, like I balled down that Oregon game and then went on to have a, a great tournament. We went on to the Final Four, and that moment like in my career was like a huge. What's the word I'm looking for? Turning point, pivotal mm. situation. Pivoting. Yeah. I like that basketball term. Yeah. Big pivotal moment for me. Mm -hmm. And from there, yeah, I just, it was like everything kind of just snapped back for me. I'm like, all right, I'm back in this thing. Let's mm -hmm. ball out. Let's do it. And so shout out to, to Coach Tara. That, that conversation she had with me, like, will live in my heart for the rest of my life. You're back in that thing. And, uh, ha! <laughs> the the we talked about mental but i feel like physically you yeah. have to go through some changes i've never been to a WNBA training camp so talk to me about how the difference of college workouts versus pro i mean it, i don't know which direction that goes mm -hmm. like harder or easier yeah. but i do know the mental pressures continue especially you being a second round pick that i mean this is not new news that second round picks a lot of times have a harder situation when the first round so to try to make that team how are you able to um be physically at your best and mentally at your best. Ooh, okay, so big surprise here. WMA training camp. It's it's really hard. Mm -hmm. Really hard. But once you get past training camp, nothing compares to, to college workouts. They're mm -hmm. just extremely <laughs> harder. They're just like when you get to the pros like, man, this you be chilling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, mm -hmm. this is it? Like practice only an hour and a half and you out of there, like that's it. But training camp's a different beast because you're competing with twenty professional athletes like day in and day out everyone sh it, it, it's it's always frustrating because everyone's trying to like with the coach is like i need five people here to like show me a drill and everyone's like i'll go <laughs> <laughs> it's so much pressure mm -hmm. and like you and you're trying to be seen by the coach and i remember i i was there candace dupree um you know she was my vet and mm -hmm. she would be like bird like get in like go like <laughs> Show yourself. Because, like, I'm not a person that, you know, like, really pushes my way to the front. Like, I'm just going to, like, mm -hmm. get my turn, you know, like, when the time is right. And she was like, no, Bert, get in there. Um, so, it's just, it's really, it's it's really tough physically because it's just a different, you go from, especially in playing in the Final Four, mm -hmm. light practices, you're just preparing for games, mm -hmm. to jumping into training camp. And it's just, like, hardcore practices you're going after because you're trying to prove yourself to a coach. And so it's just mentally taxing, it's physically taxing. Your body is so sore the first week of training camp and you're tired, you're exhausted. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with pressure? I know, like, how do you deal with pressure? For me, um, my faith, my okay. faith, you know, plays a huge part in the way that I process and the, in the way that my mindset goes into preparing for training camp, preparing for the league and just knowing that God has my back regardless. Mm -hmm. So. You know, even if I don't make this team, I'm going to be good regardless So where I got to go in my journey. And so that just, that keeps me going. I'm like, all right, just stay positive. And plus, I have a really positive mindset. If anyone knows me, they know I'm a positive patty. And that's fine. 
But there are times where, like, we're not going to sit up here and be like, positive Patty all the time <laughs> because you you did what you had to do. You made the team. Right. Uh, you played on Indiana for a few years. Mm -hmm. And you got a call or you sat down with the front office and they mm -hmm. waived you. Yes, they waived me uh, in the beginning of, of quarantine, like when everyone was, was about to come back home. And they waived me then. It was really hard for me uh, just because my third year with Indiana was... Mm -hmm. Atrocious. Not your best. Yeah. It, it, not even because of basketball. Like, yeah, I mean, I struggled a lot, but I didn't play. I was struggling with, like, some identity issues. Mm -hmm. I had to seek out a sports psychologist because, like, I was just putting all this keyword pressure on myself mm -hmm. uh, to do great. You know, I was like, okay, it's my third year in Indiana. Like, you know, it's time for me to really ball out, show people, you know, what I made out. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to average 14 points, 10 boards. Like, I'm going to be most improved player. And I just set these high expectations on myself. And it just absolutely crushed me because when I missed a layup or missed a jump shot, like, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm trash. I don't belong in this league. Mm -hmm. Like, and it just crushed my mindset. And it took me to seek someone, seek talking to my, my assistant coaches about my struggles with the performance anxiety, calling my dad, like, every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, how can I how can I be better? And he was like, man, you just can't put pressure. Just have fun. Easier said than done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just really, really, really hard. Um, and it took me getting waived by Indiana to reset my mind, reset my goals for myself. And the next year, when I got signed to play in the bubble with Atlanta, my goal was to just have fun, be Erica. Mm -hmm. Like, and if you establish that, if you're successful in that, then you'll be successful on the court. And so that was my goal. Just have fun. And you got back into it. But I want to pause real quick because we I, I know I always often preach about the WNBA being so important and how um, you all should be uplifted. But a lot of times you are trying to play for a league that might not always be welcoming to you. And a lot of players feel some type of way about, especially now that you aren't, nothing's guaranteed. So mm -hmm. I can't, I can't imagine showing up to work, putting myself through those mental obstacles and physical obstacles to not know if I'll have a spot and not know what's going to happen to me. Can you, in, in your perspective, I mean, this could obviously not be your experience, but the, the toxic pressure, um, how do you show up to a league that you don't even know if you'll be a part of? For me, it's just always remembering it's my dream. Mm -hmm. you know, going yeah. back to the, the little girl playing ball in the backyard with my dad and just remembering, like, I got a sister in this league. Like, I always want to be like my sister. I'm like, yeah, like, that's just always motivated me, mm -hmm. you know, to, to push past the pressure. And it's freaking hard pressure. And I think that's a, probably the biggest difference from college to the pros is, like, you can have a bad day in college. You ain't mm -hmm. going to kick off the team, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Missing a few layups. Or when I had that terrible drought, you know, offensive drought, in, at Stanford, you know, I wasn't going to get, you know, kicked off. You know, they trusted me. Like, you know, Bert, keep They said, we'll let you keep the scholarship. I'm just kidding. Exactly. <laughs> like, you keep your scholarship, you know, for four years. I'm yeah. locked in. You know, in the league, you, it was like, you, you start to have a couple bad games. You're like looking over your shoulder. Like, you know. Yeah. The coach going to come tap me. Like, hey, it's, it's your time, it's time to, go. to go. It's this enormous pressure. But I always have to remember, like, you're here for a reason. They mm -hmm. put you on this team for a reason. So do what you do. Mm -hmm. Go have fun. If you mess up, you mess up. Um, and if, if, if it's your time to leave, and I had to remember that when I was at Indiana, my third year, I talked to my sports psychologist about that. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? If this is my last year in the league, I have to remember, I, I've exceeded a lot of, a lot of goals for myself. I, I made it to this league. You made know, it. And may not have been the experience that I wanted, but I enjoyed what I did have. I think the average league uh, I wouldn't say life Tenure. expectancy. <laughs> Tenure. Not life expectancy. <laughs> Tenure is what you mean, I think it's three years. Mm -hmm. um, and I was at the three-year mark, and I was like, yeah, I did it, you know? I made it. And so that's the, the mindset I have to make. And this is what God wants for me, then and so be it. Mm -hmm. And I just had to remember that, um, hey, what's for you is for you. Mm -hmm. So I, lo I love the, the blind optimism. It's really, really great because you do have faith and you're so rooted in that. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, so we talked about pressure, but you, you went from Indiana to Minnesota. 
found your home in DC mm -hmm. and then your body was like, oh girl, uh, remember that time we didn't break from college to pros? Remember that time I go overseas all the time mm -hmm. and you play 40 minutes? I mean, you know, it's like your body was like, hey, here, yes. sit down. So your knee, what, what, what went on with yes. your knee in DC? <laughs> My knees. Your knees. Oh, both Plural. of them. Yeah. I, I was Plural. there for one of the... I jumped up at the same time. Not Erica. Not. You were there for the second yeah, injury. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was there. So, um... So take care of her. I thought I already had a history of, um... Trouble with my meniscus. My mm -hmm. right my right lateral meniscus. I tore it in college. Mm -hmm. My junior year. Got it fixed up. Got it cleaned up. Hadn't had any issues with it, really. I mean, I was experiencing some pain, but... And then quarantine, I think I just pushed myself. <laughs> I trained harder, not smarter in mm -hmm. quarantine. But what other resources did I have? You know, I had to go outside and run outside. I had to do, you know, workouts at the park, you know, on the grass. You're like, it was it was hard. Like, but what other options did I have? Um, and so going into the bubble, I already knew I had tore my meniscus. So I played with a torn meniscus mm -hmm. in the bubble. I played with a torn meniscus overseas. I actually and you just basically like I'm good I'm good with yeah, this torn meniscus you can spend the torn meniscus yeah, you, you know it, it's just like pushing past the pain mm -hmm. um, and I actually was I, I took like a, a week off of basketball I just did like cardio or whatever mm -hmm. and my knee did, never felt better I went and balled out that season mm -hmm. until the end of the season I had some issues uh, with my knee what year are we at now Where this is my fourth year this is my fourth mm -hmm. year uh, playing overseas in Hungary mm -hmm. I had some issues over you know overseas but um I played through them and it was fine. Mm -hmm. um, get to Washington. They're aware. I had like meetings with the doctors in there. We're at 2021 at this point. Yes, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm going back and forth. Yeah, but, no, you're fine. Um, yeah, I, I get to Washington or I'm about to go to Washington and I'm having like uh, Zoom meetings with the doctors and they're aware of my meniscus. Mm -hmm. Coaches were aware of my meniscus. Um, and so I was like, all right, cool. Like the plan was to get surgery afterwards. So I'm like, yeah, I play with it. It'll be fine. Um, I had some pain, but like I was able to push through it. And then one day and shoot around, uh, I just sort of, I do a pop, like mm -hmm. a click in my knee. And I'm not a person that cusses a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I cuss, I scream. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, it, was, it was really uh, nerve wracking, I guess, mm -hmm. more the feeling. And I hopped out and hopped to the training room. I was like, Frank, like my knee, something's wrong with my knee. Mm -hmm. um, my is like, I feel like a pop, like on the side of my meniscus. She's like, all right, got an MRI. And they're like, yeah, you're not going to be able to wait till the after season. You're going to have to, it's best Do that it you now. get this done now. So um, luckily, Coach Tebow was like really cool about it. And he was like, yeah, I'd rather have you at the end of the season mm -hmm. than you try to play through this pain. And, mm -hmm. you know, we can't, you know, manage your load or whatever. It's like, okay. So I had to get uh, another lateral meniscus scope on the same knee I got done in college. Mm -hmm. Then I came back from that uh, about eight weeks later. Which was fine. We had All Star break. We can, you know, it was a longer break, and I ended up not missing too many games. Thank God. Came back with a with a knee brace. Um, a bionic one. A bionic knee brace. I hated that thing. But I came I back with my knee brace. I came back, and I was I was actually still playing well mm -hmm. um, until the second to the last game of the season, and I went to close out. You were at that game. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I went to close out a jump, and like my knees, like it just got like got stuck. <laughs> like my left knee got stuck. And my right knee is where all my usual issues are. And my left, I'm like, Frank, something ain't right. At this point, I didn't know which knee was which. And I was like, oh my God, she just got it fixed. Anyway. I'm like, something ain't right. <laughs> I go to train, I'm like, yeah, something ain't right my knee. We in the back, she we working on it. We running. I'm texting my dad. I'm texting you. I'm like, you yeah. over here like, what's wrong with your knee? <laughs> I'm like, girl, I'm fine. I'll be fine. I come out running. Skipping. Running. I was everybody, so annoyed. Everybody clapping. Ah, I was so like, girl, you good? Eat? I'm good. Went back in the game. Ball, we won the game. Um, so then the like two days later the doctor's like I'm like doc like my knees still ain't right like is he getting locked up like I'm walking like I'm just he just gets caught mm -hmm. and she was like okay you know what let's get an MRI on it get our MRI the next day doctor calls me like before practice um they're like yeah we're it, it's best that you get surgery on it like we're gonna need to clean up some things in there you know it's just gonna make it really uncomfortable for you um and I remember I sat like where we get our breakfast and I cried mm -hmm. and then I dried my tears and I went back and I didn't tell anyone that I was gonna have mm -hmm. surgery and I went just went to practice we played our last game we didn't win so we didn't make it to playoffs and then um like I really didn't tell my teammates then I was gonna have surgery mm -hmm. I was like I didn't want anyone to pity me or mm -hmm. even think about how oh, Grace having another surgery you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so 
I got the surgery done, did some rehab in, in DC, and then. We'll get to bless your child's Yeah. <laughs> but a common theme was pushing through the pain. Yeah. When is it worth it to push through the pain? And then when is it worth it to trust the process and not? I'm in the midst of, the midst of that right now. Still trying to figure that out, honestly. So actually, let me hold that question. Okay. Keep that keep that tight with you. <laughs> you go to Besiktas after this surgery, you knowing you have bad knees, playing 40 minutes a game, really the rock of that team. Shout out to your performance overseas because honestly, it was stellar. You never cease to amaze me game after game, really putting up for your team. Being the rock again, the leader again, um, both vocally and you know with production on the court. So going, yeah, it's enough gas. Um, so going from this, oh, I have to get the scope. You're gonna you're gonna need surgery. Getting surgery yeah. to playing a full forty minutes, being so um, they depended on you so much. Yeah. What is that? What is that about? <laughs> and why? How are you capable of doing that? So I came in, my team was uh, 0-5, and, 5. and uh, I didn't think I was going to play. I talked to the doctors. Um, they were like, yeah, you, you know, we'll do like two weeks of more rehab, and you'll practice with so the team. So you thought. And so I thought. <laughs> Coach was like, you, can you play next week? I'm like, my guy, I ain't really, I ain't played 5 on no. What was your answer? I was like, I, I'm a person that doesn't really speak up, and that's what it I was. Yes, it was yes. <laughs> the answer was yes. I'm just like, hey, man. and my dad's like, hey, if you can play, your body can play. Then, mm -hmm. hey, you know, let's see. So I, I, I did my first game. I played like absolute trash, mm -hmm. trash, trash, mm -hmm. trash. And we went on to lose that game and another game. So mm -hmm. we was zero and seven. Okay, I'm calling my agent. Like, hey, my guy, I'm about to be out. <laughs> get me out of here. <laughs> but we ended up having a coaching change, and um, from there on out, like my performance uh, increased. I played better. Not because the coach changed, but just my body finally got used to playing again. Mm -hmm. How were your knees feeling at this point? They felt, honestly, they, my left knee felt amazing. The mm -hmm. knee, the last knee surgery, okay. that felt amazing. Didn't feel anything with that. Um, my right knee, I was like, I'm calling my strength conditioning coach from overseas. Like, we're really close. I'm like, Lisa, or like, they hurt. Mm -hmm. She's like, you know, it's just the adjustment. You got to get used to the impact again. All right, cool. A little while, my knees felt decent, like. I wouldn't say they're like absolutely pain free, but you know they would be like super sore or something before practice, and then I could practice, mm -hmm. practice perfectly, be a little sore afterwards, and it was fine. Like I was able to push through that, no worries. I got a high pain tolerance, so mm -hmm. that went no worries for me. Um, yeah, then then the coach like loved me. <laughs> he was like, "You're gonna play forty minutes." I haven't played forty minutes. Full since, forty since high school. Since high school, but I went on to have my best professional career, uh, career, <laughs> professional year of performance. Career. Yeah, I was getting career highs. Mm -hmm. I was, I was out there balling, and, and my team really did rely on me. Twenty twenty was the standard, like twenty points, twenty rebounds was a standard <laughs> for you. Like I got this. I said, like, okay, girl. Yeah, I went on to ball out, um, and it was a, it was a great experience for me, and I was really happy that I left Hungary to go to mm -hmm. to Besiktas, um, despite. <laughs> And it was looking great. It was looking great it until it, until it was grim. Until it was real grim. And I went on. It was like two, maybe four games before the season, the, the regular season was over, and I had a really really bad ankle sprain. Jumped up, tried to block somebody's shot, came down somebody's ankle. Um, Just doing so much. But, it was really bad. Yeah. It was a really bad ankle sprain. Like and like I said, I have a high pain tolerance. Mm -hmm. I didn't cry or anything. But the pain lingered for a long time. Like, I had to sit down and just... Yeah, this it. wasn't like D.C. when you came skipping back. Yes. You no, didn't skip back. I wasn't... I, I, they carried me to the bench. Um, they tried to bring a wheelchair. I said, oh, no. Nah. I ain't going out like that. <laughs> but y'all going to carry me. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um, so, yeah, it was a really bad injury. It was swollen. It was bruised. It was very painful. Um, and we had a must-win game three days later. That's the thing about overseas teams. They don't care about your injuries. They don't care about your body. Some do. My team in Hungary, if I would have, they would have seen my ankle. They would have said, Erica, sit out. Mm -hmm. Your body's not ready to go. Mm -hmm. But this team, Besiktas, different mindset. Turkey. Turkey, Turkey is different. Turkish mm -hmm. mindset. Completely different. A little less relaxed. They They're like, can, can you play? Okay. The doctor's are like, you'll be good to play. Train them. You good. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm looking at this picture like, you're not good. <laughs> you're not good, bro. You're not good. <laughs> It was bad. It was bad. It was really swollen. It was in and I was like, I'm gonna try it. If I can do it, you know, I'm talking. Everybody telling me, Erica, don't risk it. Don't risk it. You got training camp. Mm -hmm. You got bigger and better opportunities coming ahead. Like this team don't even care about, you know, <laughs> they, just, they just care about the wins. They didn't even care about you. And 
I, I'm just a person that I just love to play. I love to play the game. I, it's really hard for me to like sit down and not even so necessarily play the game, but I let my teammates down. It's a must win game. I'm like, how can I sit out from this game? So I ended up playing despite a lot of people's, even, even my strength and conditioning coach, she was like, Erica girl. Mm. Yeah, it ain't working. And she, yeah, you know, <laughs> and so I did it. I felt comfortable with it. Um, figuring out my career high. <laughs> I was so bad. I had 30 and 16 that game. Yeah. <laughs> Balled out. Um, my coach was like, thank you. My teammates like, thank you, Erica. Thank you. I'm like, I got y'all. I got y'all. Um, but then after that, <laughs> we had two days off. My ankle still swollen and bruised. I played with a swollen bruised ankle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Two days later, it's still just looking the same. Cause I'm limping at this point. I'm limping all around. Uh -huh. Turkey. Um, it was, I couldn't push in. I couldn't push past it. It was too painful for me to try to play with it. My my ankle was sore. My knee was sore because of my ankle mechanics. I tried to practice, couldn't. Um, I almost had to try to play this in this last game. Luckily, the other team, like we didn't make playoffs, so I didn't mm -hmm. need to play in that game. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, I would have if we needed to. And um, here I am now. So okay, <laughs> okay. So those are you out there who are listening like i've been through a certain thing like this that could potentially stop me from doing what i love what's your advice to those people listening about pushing through the pain i think you just always got to weigh out um the positives and negatives the pros mm -hmm. and the cons if it's worth it to you Maybe I ain't doing the best advice, but this is me. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this, and this is I you take this where you want. Uh the whole theme of this pod right now is trusting the process. Mm -hmm. And I have a problem, a personal problem with like being in control, right? Mm -hmm. I always think that like I'm in control, I'm never in control. No. Um no, not. and for this situation in particular, you wanted to take control because you love the game. Yeah. And I said, Erica. You know, like, <laughs> like you, you got to sit this down because of this. Do you interpret it as you not trusting the process of the healing of your ankle? And God made you say, you got to sit down now. Could very well be true. <laughs> and I'm not pushing that on you. I'm just, I'm no, just no, no, asking no. you, how do you interpret you trusting the process or not trusting the process right. and the result of what happened? Right. For me, I'm just thinking, like, even if. I get hurt. Like, I just, I just knew, like, the faith that I, I it was like, it's kind of like, it, uh, counteractive. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the word I'm looking mm -hmm. for. <laughs> like, I had faith in God, knowing that I wasn't going to get hurt, but, like, didn't have the, like, I wouldn't say I didn't have the faith, but I'm just like, nah, like, God got me, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> He good, like he's I mean, he might be telling praying for those that. red flags. He gives you all the red flags in the world, and you said not God, not not like that, not like that. Nah, like that. God, nah, God, God ain't, God ain't, God ain't gonna, he, he, ain't, he ain't gonna let me get injured in, in this game. So I'm, a, I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna, you know, trust my body. My body say, and I prayed. I did. I mm -hmm. did a lot of prayer that mm -hmm. day. I said, God, because because I know my mindset. God, if my body is able to play, tell me. And, and you told play. you no, but you said. Hey, and if my yeah. body is not able to play, mm -hmm. tell me, and I and I and I can't play. Mm -hmm. I was able, I could play. I could push through that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even really. It wasn't even any major pain until after that game, and I was feeling the pain. What were you feeling pain. it? In my ankle, mm -hmm. in my ankle, my knee, my my opposite Achilles. I was just feeling it everywhere, and I just had to do rehab. I couldn't even practice with the team i'm mm -hmm. just doing on the side and honestly i don't have any regrets mm -hmm. i still don't have any yeah. regrets and that's beautiful that's mm -hmm. beautiful now you're coming back to WNBA training camp because mm -hmm. you play overseas that is a really big part of how um you bank a training camp because mm -hmm. you play overseas that is a really big part of how um you bank the you balance out being a professional athlete. That's the compensation right there overseas. I make the majority of my um, money. Yeah, overseas. you do. And and you're like a star of it. You know, you're a star. And so uh, where where you were like, playing your role here, you're you're a star over there. And so you're yeah. like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to ball out. But there's like a two-day turnover. Now, yes. Right? Like how many days did you have between? Uh, So we finished our season. I'll say, I'll, I'll just say we finished our season Friday. I packed Saturday and I uh, left for D.C. Sunday. Got there Sunday night in D.C. Mm-hmm. 
and didn't even get a chance to to gather yourself to be like, hey, I'm not okay. Yeah. I'm not okay. I think that that's a bigger issue than we want to talk about. I know we always talk about like, oh, y'all have to go overseas to pay your bills. And like, that's what that's not true. Y'all y'all go overseas, you 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 get more money, obviously. Um, but that turnaround time is so fast. So if there's anything that happens to you, there's no way to heal it. And then plus mm -hmm. this year in particular, it goes from, we always talk about the 144. Mm -hmm. This year is not that. Now it's 132 as of right now. Um, so that's even, even more because it's like a lot of talents coming in. The players are developing overseas. I, I, I want to place emphasis on the fact that players are developing and, and getting professional experience overseas. So they're becoming um, bigger contenders to make it into the league. So it's not just the rookies that are coming in that y'all are battle testing against, like those fresh legs. Mm -hmm. Y'all are battle testing against these these hungry players coming from overseas. And so you didn't get a chance to like sit down and, and rest that because you can't with training camp. If you're not if you're not healthy and you got got injured outside of that it's really, really difficult for a team to have empathy in that way when it's limited roster spots and, you know, we have the hardships and everything. And especially returning to a Washington Mystics team that's already not healthy. Yeah. So the odds are stacked against you. What was your mindset going into training camp and how were you able to stay positive those days that you were there? <laughs> <laughs> My mindset in training camp, I'm like, gosh. First of all, I had to go on this freaking 12-hour flight. Mm -hmm. My ankle's swollen. I mean, honestly, I flew on a flight to Istanbul, and my ankles were swollen, and I wasn't even injured, so I don't know how you made it through there. My ankle's swollen. My knee's swollen. I'm in pain. Uh -huh. I went to go find ice uh, upstairs in my in my apartment. Poured ice in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. Soaked in the bathtub. Um, prayer. That mm -hmm. was literally, like, my mindset. Like, I'm, I'm telling my friend, like, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to be able to compete. Like, mm -hmm. my body hurts. Mm -hmm. We're just going to go and see. Like, that was mm -hmm. like, we just going to go and see. And I took a lot of a lot of prayer. I'm like, Lord, just, just help me get through this. Mm -hmm. So I get to there. I get to the to training camp. Um, they kind of heard about my injuries or whatever. Um, they're like, okay, well, we'll just kind of sit you out and see, you know, mm -hmm. see what the doctor says. So I'm like, all right, cool. You know, Coach T kind of like, okay, you kind of feeling a little sore. I'm like, yeah, just a little bit. You know, ain't nothing, nothing major. Mm -hmm. With the doctor, she was like, okay, yeah. She's like, ah, I don't, I don't think you should play this preseason game. You know, it's still, still kind of swollen and, and sore, like it's still sore to touch. She's like, ah, I don't think it's best. I'm like, all right. I'm already then I'm kind of nervous, but Coach T's like, hey, we still want you to come on this trip. I'm like, cool. You know, I got he must have a good mindset that mm -hmm. you know he still trusts me or he still wants me to be on this team. I'm like, cool. Um, so I wasn't practicing. I was just doing rehab. I'm mm -hmm. on the side, cheering on my teammates. You know, still trying to be as involved as impossible as I can. Mm -hmm. Still trying to learn to play. Still trying to communicate with the coaches. Went to the preseason game. Came back. Um, the next day, like did a <laughs> during the, the preseason uh, trip. Like they put me on the treadmill. I I've never been having a time. I've never been in more pain yeah. running in my life. Like every step was pain, but I was like, I can't let them see that. Mm -hmm. I can't let them share that thing that I'm like, I can't even run on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. I had to push through that pain. It was terrible, mm -hmm. <laughs> terrible on the <laughs> terrible on the treadmill. When I got off, it was even worse. I was mm -hmm. even even more pain. Um, so I'm like thinking, like, how the heck am I gonna be able to practice? I can't even run on the freaking treadmill. Mm -hmm. And the next day I had a, a basketball workout. Mm -hmm. It was like a lot of prayer, a lot of Advil, a lot of ice. Come on, prayer, Advil, and ice. <laughs> Erica's they, goodie bag of healing. They taped me up. I, I did a basketball workout, and I did I did really well for my – you know, I hadn't even played basketball probably in about a week. Mm -hmm. I did pretty good. Um, proud of myself. My body felt, felt fine. I'm like, I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I, should, I can do this. The next day, like, okay, um, we still don't want you to practice. We want you to progress on the side. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, we, me and Megan Gufferson, you know, shooting, shooting on the side, you know, it wasn't no real workout. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, all right, cool, whatever. Um, I'm still thinking that the next day um, I'm going to be able to practice with the team. Um, I think we had a preseason game or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't play in it. And that next day, it was the next day after the preseason game, I thought they would tell me, all right, cool, you clear to practice. You know, doctor said, okay, you know, you think you should be fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm already like, cool, like, I'm waking up, I got to. A great offer from overseas. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I got a dream offer from overseas. I'm feeling amazing. Um, get to the gym, and Coach T was like, uh, or the trainer was like, hey, you talk to Coach T. You know, at that point, I'm like, all right, yeah, that's, I'm getting laid. But I'm still, I was still kind of have some optimism. Yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like eh, maybe we'll talk to him about something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my heart's kind of beating stuff, and I went up and talked to him. He's like, yeah, unfortunately, we got to let you go. 
you know, just injuries. I didn't expect you and not for you to be able to practice. And, you know, we just need bodies right now. And so, you know, it really hurts me to say, he's like, I appreciate you. I love you. Um, you know, hopefully we can bring you back later on in the season, you know, maybe for hardships and stuff. And I was like, okay, you know, I appreciate it. I absolutely love my experience at Washington. Mm -hmm. I appreciate Coach Sheehan. I was about to say, did you believe him when he said that? When he does, that he's going to bring me back? Mm -hmm. No. Did you believe everything that he was saying? Like, hey, mm -hmm. like, this is why and, right. and we love you. Like, how is it, how are you able to process a we love you moment mm -hmm. in in the, in in a situation where your job is getting taken from you? Yeah. Um, I was honestly surprised he said he loved him. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. But honestly, it did feel like he really appreciated me because we had such a, a crazy season with injuries mm -hmm. in the way that I had to push past my pain and we like the way that everyone had to push past their pain and try to help that team, like try to make playoffs. Like I think he really appreciated my effort. So I thought it was actually sincere. Mm -hmm. And um he's an amazing coach. Amazing I love coach Sheehan. Yeah. And so I appreciated him. And at the end of the day, like I know it's all a business. Mm -hmm. So even if like someone say like in Indiana, like catch had a catch, like I'm super cool with catch. Catch said I love you. Like mm -hmm. because I know that's the type of person I am, the presence that I bring, people really enjoy, you know, who I am and, and they enjoy being around me. So I know people are gonna appreciate my personality. Um, catch had to say like I love you and stuff and, and at the end of the day you know like I know it's a business I, I'm super professional about it mm -hmm. too because you never, might not know like when the next opportunity might come mm -hmm. they might need you mm -hmm. so I'm like yeah that's what I'm like well, I appreciate you coach T you know I understand like I do need to go home I do need to get healthy mm -hmm. it'd be really good for me to get this time home and so that was it I packed up my stuff and said bye to my teammates and I flew home and here I am in Bakersfield mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the first time in uh probably like over a decade that you've had this long or, or anticipating this long of rest or yeah, recovery. For sure. How's it feel? Um, honestly, like it's been a really good experience for me mm -hmm. being home. I haven't, like I didn't even cry. Like when I got waved, I remember I got waved in the end, I cried, I cried tears, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe it's, it, maybe it's, I think I cried more cause I thought like, man, I'm not, I'm not made, I'm not made for this league. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be in this league. I'm like, I, my skill level ain't good enough. Like this year I knew like, I'm balling. I could have balled out Period. in training camp. Like, I knew, like, I was playing at a different level in, 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 in Turkey. And so, um, I guess that kind of affected my mindset. Like, you know, I know the type of player I am. Like, I just got to get healthy. Mm -hmm. It's just about opportunity for me. Uh -huh. So, being home, like, it's been really good for me um, to be home, be with my family, be able to actually rest. I'm still kind of in limbo trying to figure out, you know, what's the best option for my body. Um, I'm waiting to see, you know, what doctors say out here. So we'll see, still waiting on that. But it's been amazing to be with my family. Mm -hmm. I was able to go to watch my baby sister's basketball game. Mm -hmm. She's seven, you know, see her and her mm -hmm. run up to me and give me a hug. And like, when she saw me at her game, go to a friend's baby shower, mm -hmm. like baby showers are unheard of probably as a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. You never go to them. I was able to go to church. I haven't been to church in like two years, mm -hmm. one because of the pandemic. And then it's hard to go to church in the league. Mm -hmm. We play on Sundays. So, like, I'm just getting opportunities that I never had when I was playing in the league. I'm able to rest my body, able to see my family, and just, it's, I'm still in limbo, but, like, my faith in God is because he forced me to sit down. Like, he yeah. finally forced me. Knowing what you know now, looking back on it, what about your process that you're like, this is what it was trying to tell me? Or what, what do you think, what is the message do you think is happening right now? For you rest mm. rest i mean he just told me that for a long time and yeah i still kept pushing past it until mm -hmm. he's like erica i'm gonna sit you down <laughs> you mm -hmm. know i'm going to sit you down and so it's been really hard for me i'm not gonna lie like to try to rest like my mom's like i was like where are you going i'm like i'm about to go work out she's like how you gonna how you recover you can't walk <laughs> i want to go like shoot with my dad i'm like terrible idea mm -hmm. <laughs> my ankle's still not ready for that um and it's tough. It's it's tough. Like it, that was really frustrating for me because I still had hope. Honestly, like hope that I'd be able to like be with teams. Like if somebody called me, like, "Hey, are you ready?" Uh. <laughs> 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 but it's it's been good for me to be at home mm -hmm. um, and just rest, like I said, and just figure out what's next for my body. And if 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 I do have to sit out this whole WBA mm -hmm. season, I won't regret it. Everyone, I'm just talking to one of my trainers, like, and it's mm -hmm. it's not bad if you sit out this mm -hmm. WC then it's honestly opportunity for your body to be able to get the rest that it needs that it hasn't gotten in like you said in about a decade you know with mm -hmm. Stanford you know we play year round long like we get a week off in between 
the NCAA tournament and then spring workouts and that's it. That's that's all you get off. I did that for four years, then another five years in the league, and so my body is exhausted. It hurts. It's saying, like, Erica, hey baby girl, it's time to chill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I'm trying to listen to it as best as I can. Um, and just and trust God. <laughs> a lot of people have an, a lot trust of people God. have an irrational fear yeah. of if you leave the league for a season, mm-hmm. you won't make it back. But you said I'm playing the best basketball of my life yeah. and I'm built for this. Mm-hmm. Why how are you able to avoid that irrational fear? And I mean I don't even think it's irrational. I think it's mm-hmm. perfectly rational. Yeah. How are you afraid to avoid that um that fear. I'll just call it a fear. I'm not gonna call it that because it's not a fact. Mm-hmm. Obviously, people have gone out and gone back in, and you said you were made for this. Mm-hmm. So, what is it about you that makes you made for this league? I'm just uh, I'm an unconventional player. Mm-hmm. I'm a I'm a player that teams need. Mm-hmm. A lot, honestly, what has allowed me to stay in this league is the mm-hmm. person that I am. Mm-hmm. It's the the character that I have. I'm a person, I'm an amazing person. I don't want to have myself, I'm an amazing person. I'm a great personality, teammates want to be around me. I bring positivity, I bring leadership, I bring just amazing energy mm-hmm. to teams. Um, and that's allowed me to stay on this league, honestly. And then on top of that, my basketball skill level has in, in improved. Uh, I rebound like crazy. I, the, the way that I snag offensive rebounds is like no other. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to box me out. <laughs> It's really hard to box me out, and um, and coaches appreciate that because that's effort. I mean, you can't teach that, you know. The skill that I have to to get rebounds is is off top of it. Shoot putbacks, blocking shots, just mm-hmm. bringing energy to my team. Everybody knows when Eric McCall going into the game, mm-hmm. the level of energy is gonna go up. Mm-hmm. No matter how far you down, how up you are, like when I go in, it's a different level, and and coaches appreciate that, and that's why I'm meant to be in this league. Regardless if I got to set out this this WNBA season, this ain't the end of Erica McCall. Erica Her. Bird McCall. Erica Bird McCall. Erica Bird McCall. Y'all don't know my middle name. Maybe maybe I'll change my middle name to Bird. It, don't. <laughs> <laughs> With every process, it's a journey. And so that there are steps that keep moving forward. What are next steps for you, immediate or long term? What are the next steps for Erica Bird McCall? <laughs> <laughs> the next steps for me are getting healthy. Okay. Getting healthy, um, figuring out a rehab routine that I need. Like I said, I don't know how long I'll be out. Mm-hmm. I could be out for a week. Like mm-hmm. my body could just be like, okay, you got your rest. Like, you good, girl. Um, or it could be longer. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we're still trying to figure that out. Um, but finding a, a, a rehab regimen for me um, is the first key steps. And then, shoot, once I figure out that, getting my mindset into, okay, we're gonna play in this, we're gonna be in this league for how long? I don't know, maybe a team will only be for three weeks. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's the end of the season contract, who knows? But I just gotta be ready for when my name is called. Um, and realizing that my body ain't ready, like, hey, this, mm-hmm. this might be a good time for you to sit this one out, E. Mm-hmm. <laughs> longevity prolonging my career we love that for you yeah because I want to play in this league or I want to play professional 10 mm-hmm. years mm-hmm. and it's been 5 um, so I'm going to year 6 so I need 5 more years to check out my goal and get out to retirement and uh, my body right now is saying oof girl mm-hmm. I don't know that's going to happen so maybe this is what I need but yeah. I would love to be back in this league I want to it's my dream um, but I'm also I have to listen to my body listen to God what God's mm-hmm. saying so yeah, yeah, I yeah. love that. And then we know that you have your faith, and you're very, very rooted in that. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, for for those out there who are just battling with mental health mm. issues, because I don't even, I'm not going to say mental health issues, who are struggling with um, trying to find balance in how to navigate situations outside of your faith. How, like, what advice do you have to maintain that solid mindset? Because as we're talking, I'm listening to your injuries, I'm listening to how rooted you are, um, and you, you seem to still have that that optimism about you. So I want you to drop an Ericaism on how to maintain mental health in a positive direction as opposed to deterioration because of pressure. Basketball just a game. Yeah. 
it's just a game. It's a beautiful game. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of the people that we are and the, the positions, you know, where we're at, we put so much pressure on it and we, and we put this on, to put us on this high pedestal. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, it's just a game. And it ain't your life, it ain't your whole life. Mm -hmm. Basketball, you know, it shouldn't be your identity. Because mm -hmm. if it is, man, it's gonna drive you crazy. Mm -hmm. And it was my identity for a long time. And once I took that out, once I realized, you know, I'm Dave, I'm Eric McCall, I'm so much more than basketball. I got a podcast. Mm -hmm. I got a dope podcast. You do. I like music. Mm -hmm. I'm getting into music. You want rap now? I'm just, you gonna spit though? I'm gonna spit at the end of this okay. episode. Okay, okay, period. I'm gonna spit at this end of the, in this episode. But I got so much more going for me outside of ball, and I don't need to focus just on ball. Because if I do focus on ball, my mental ain't gonna be. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be good. Mm -hmm. It's just if I mess up, I'm, I'm thinking about you know I'm, I'm messing up. Even if I do well, okay, how can I be better for the next mm -hmm. day? How can I? How can I keep, you know, carry on that performance? And so I just have to remember that, you know, it's just a game. Love it. Remember, you know, why you fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. And just and find balance in the things that you do off the court. It's about, like you say, we always say that basketball ain't going to be around forever. So, of course, it's, it's your life. It's your, it's your, your money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but at the end of the day, if you put so much pressure on yourself, like, you ain't going to have, like, the prolonged career that you want because mm -hmm. it's going to drive you crazy. And it's not gonna be as fun as you would like it to. Sure, you might be successful, but when you look back at it, you you'd be like, "Dang, that was a tough time in my mm -hmm. career. I was born, but that was a tough time in my career. And I ain't, I didn't want it to be like that." So that's my that's my word of advice. I love that. Just a game and finding balance outside of that. So thank you so much for having me um, a part of your balance with being on this podcast. And it has been a pleasure walking through the journey. And I hope that people have gathered from you outside of, you know, praying to God because you have to listen to the red flags that he um, gives you. I hope that they know that, hey, you're built for the, you're here for a reason. These obstacles or, you know, not everything is an obstacle. You have some bright light, bright moments that you've had. And so everything is placed there for a reason, but no matter what is placed in your life, it's the faith that's going to bring you through. It's the faith in the process, the trust in the process, the trust in the journey, and you keep taking steps to the direction that you want. So, Erica, I want you to, I want to thank you for just contributing the game in such a positive way, um, contributing you. to the world and shine your light on your experiences, other players' experiences. You know, having me talk to you about it too is an honor. So, thank you. Take your flowers and take your rest because we need. You're ridiculous. She's picking up the floral arrangement on the table that we're sitting at right now. <laughs> um, but just take your flowers, but take your rest, more importantly. I will. Thank you, Ariel. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being on. This was a super dope, beautiful, um, conducive. You're ridiculous. Conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. But before we take off for the end of this episode, I always like to ask all my guests, what's their craziest? Oh, shoot. Okay. Craziest what? I mean, now that we're expanding the show, we won't just focus on overseas. So what's been your craziest interview moment? Craziest interview moment? Yeah. It's kind of dark. It's kind of like sad. Okay. Well, it has nothing we, to do we, with the W either. We were on real. Um, okay. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll share more than one. So the first one is when I was interviewing Allison Felix um, during the Black Lives Matter protest when they were like, you know, heavy and... Um, y'all had just done a demonstration on court, which caused you all to take a day of observation. Yes. Um, but I had a, an interview that day with her and she was talking about her black child and I just broke down. So that was mm -hmm. probably the craziest moment, um, and not in a fun way to face. Now I would say that every, hmm, my funnest moment, oh my God, there've been so many. I, uh, Every time I interview Candace, we are always fun. So that's <laughs> that's those are moments. Shout I out Candace Parker. shout out Candace Parker. Um, but I love any type of media scrum things. Like I love getting in the nitty gritty of everything and being able to do rapid fires with players. I remember this has nothing to do with professional basketball. I'm so sorry because of the theme. Um, but twenty when was Asia Durst senior year? 2019. Final Four, uh, I was learning all their dances. It was, like, it was just ridiculous. And Wayne was with me recording me. And 
I looked like the auntie. And mind you, I was still in my... Tw- was I my... I wasn't. But like, I was still <laughs> fairly young then. And I was like, oh my God, I'm an auntie. So yeah. that's probably the craziest moment. But my craziest uh, overseas basketball moment mm-hmm. that has nothing to do with interviewing was my first time in Russia. And I guess they never seen no black person before. No. And they just kept taking pictures with me. <laughs> I just, they thought you were a celebrity. They, they, I don't know what was going on, but I was like, I, "You're a goddess, honey." I was no, but it was like it was like a oh my god, I've never seen yes, somebody like you, and that's that was obnoxious to me. But that was probably the crazy. That was it overseas. Oh, and the cats in Turkey. Oh my god, the cats in Istanbul, like the animals. I love playing with the animals. I'm such that's an animal girl, and so yeah, that's their country. Not the humans. <laughs> that they they run the country. I There's had cats everywhere. So much fun playing with the animals in Istanbul. It's it's so many cats in Turkey. Oh, one more, one more. No, I know we had a wrap because we're literally taking so much. When um, the craziest moment was going into Fenerbahce's gym and seeing that there was a shield over their away team and learning the mm-hmm. history of like the rivalries there and knowing that like I packed um, red and yellow in my in my suitcase and nobody like told me like hey that's Gala's colors and that's like a big rival. So Finner actually put me in in their in their colors and their blue and yellow. And so I was like I had no idea it was that intense, but I had to literally get an outfit from the team because of the colors that I had packed. And so just knowing that rivalry exists it was wild. It's it's wild. You know, I played part of Best Josh, so I'm part of that that rivalry, you mm-hmm. know, Best Josh, Finnebache and Gala. Mm-hmm. You know, they're all derby team, you know, they got the, the derby games. And so I like like losing. We were like consistently losing in Best Josh, and they're like, "Hey, y'all got to learn the history of this team. Like, mm-hmm. y'all can't suck. Y'all can't. Y'all can't be trash. <laughs> y'all got to be good. Like, we we are a turkey. Like, mm-hmm. and so I had to learn that that the history of Turkish basketball, Fenerbahce Gala, Best Josh is incredible. It's it's like you choose. It's like you have to choose when you're born. Mm-hmm. What is your team? Yeah, it's wild. It's wild. It's in it's in it's their blood. Like in fans. Go crazy over it. We'll yeah. touch base on that in one episode. Yeah. We don't have a fans episode, and we just will talk about. Oh, you don't have a fans episode? That's gonna be fun. Sure. I can't wait to tune in. We have a fans episode, and so we just gonna break down what it's like with the fans overseas and shoot. We'll talk about fans in the league too. Y'all crazy too. And it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate you, Ariel. Thank you, Erica. Ariel, Ari, Ivory, Chambers. Where can we find you on social media? Tell the tell the people to where you can find you. Ari Ivory. Period. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Ari Ivory on every social media platform ever. And then uh, I run Highlighter, right? I'm the founder of Highlighter. And so um, that's on every social media platform as well. Um, but you can't leave without spitting a little something you just promised them. It's, it's on record. So, you know, if you want to take us out with a little freestyle about goodbye. About goodbye? Like telling them bye. Um, okay. Not me putting you on the spot like this. You did it yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think I was going to do like a, a, a whole freestyle about, about saying goodbye. Drop a bar. Drop a bar, okay. Um, a 16. No, not, no, not a full 16. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, it's good. I'm saying goodbye. So I got to fly. Media me. Up in these streets. They call me Bird. Because I... Be high, high in the sky. Oh, I so goodbye that. to my friends. Y'all dope. I'll see y'all again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we really got high, y'all. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I like that. So y'all tune in. Y'all can follow me, Erica McCall, at Birds of Word underscore twenty four on Instagram and Twitter. We also have a Twitter for the Birds Eye View podcast. You can mm-hmm. follow us at Birds Eye View. No, you can follow. Sorry, I'm sorry because I remember it, it was difficult to get the bird's eye view pod like mm-hmm. handle. So it's you can follow us at one bird's eye view. The number one. Mm-hmm. I thought that was catchy. No, that's cute. At one bird's eye view. Okay, on Twitter, and I'm gonna be tweeting y'all. She me. loves Twitter. She's I'm gonna be tweeting y'all. Yeah, we gonna be getting into it. We gonna be chatting up. You know, so it's gonna be fun. Of course, you can follow us on the Instagram at bird's eye view dot pod. And yeah, just more content, more more dope content. Shout out to my team. Shout out to, you know, Adana. Shout out to my guys. 
I'm sorry, I'm doing shout outs. Okay. I was like, what does that have to do with your like, pod? Like, Literally, like, it's time like to go. A... Like and subscribe to everything <laughs> that she does and follow because that was completely unnecessary. But yeah. Bye, y'all. This is Adana? Adana. Oh. <laughs> it's like, what?